Now watch closely. What are you witnessing before your eyes? Well, this is what happens to $10,000 invested at the age of 18. Using an average market return of right around 10%, we double our money roughly every seven years. Now I know some of you might freak out at me and say, well, no one's gonna have $10,000 to invest at 18 years old. Some will, but maybe not all of you. But what about 20,000 at the age of 25? Think about all the dumb purchases we make. That is easily attainable. So that $10,000 investment at the age of 18, it keeps doubling every seven years. So by the time we're 67 years old, that money is now worth 1,280,000. Boom. Now it's always funny when people say, they don't want to invest in the stock market because it's too risky. Okay, I'll agree with you there. There's some degree of risk. But risk is everywhere, and we have to learn how to manage it. Going to school for four years, racking up fifty dollars to $100,000 worth of school loans, and graduating with a psychology degree, that is a horrible investment. But no one will argue how risky that investment is. But now you've graduated college, you're stuck working for minimum wage, complaining about being buried in debt. You see, having $100,000 worth of debt and making less than $10 an hour, that sounds way riskier to me than investing $10,000 in the stock market. But that's just me. So what is a stock? A stock is a piece of ownership of a corporation. So a corporation looks to raise money so it divides itself up into shares and each share is a piece of ownership of the company. So even if you only own one share of a stock, you are a part owner of that corporation. So let's say XYZ Corporation here sells brains. It's cutting edge science and these brains allow people to have common sense and anyone can buy them. Well this company is worth $1 billion. Then Big Money buys 100 shares of the company's stock for $10,000. After doing some research and noticing society's lack of common sense, he thinks XYZ Corporation has a great product and the potential to grow a lot. Over the next year, XYZ grows its total earnings and revenue and many people begin to see the company's potential. Now stock price is related to supply and demand. If there are more buyers than sellers, price goes up. If there are more sellers than buyers, price goes down. Because there is more buyers looking to get their hands on shares of XYZ, and the company is not issuing any more shares of stock, the stock price rises. And the stock price will continue to rise until the buyers and sellers even out. So in the case of Ben Big Money here, as XYZ's market capitalization, which is a fancy term for company value, rises from $1 billion to $2 billion, the total outstanding shares of the company remains at 10 million shares. So Ben Big Money's 100 shares that he initially bought for $10,000 are now worth $20,000. In this scenario, you can see that investing is a win-win for the company and the shareholder because by purchasing the stock, Big Money gave XYZ Corporation the capital it needed to expand its company. And in return, as the company grew, so did the value of Big Money's shares. So now you've seen that the road to becoming a millionaire isn't necessarily as difficult as you may have thought. It just takes self-discipline. An easy concept to remember is pay yourself first. Every time you get a paycheck, set aside some money. And this money is not to be spent, but to help accumulate assets and grow your wealth. It may seem like a small amount at first, but if you consistently pay yourself first, this money will grow and perhaps someday significantly supplement or replace your income. You should also have a firm grasp of what a stock is and how the stock increases or decreases in price at this point. But now it's time to start digging deeper. So check out our next video.